the Giga Structural Engineering crew is at it again, although this time they didn't add anything new in terms of Giga Structures, no. They did add a whole bunch of polish to the mod, including a couple of origins, and we're going to be diving into those today. It's Giga Structural Engineering, of course, so get ready to be blown away by what you're about to see. First of all, there's this brand spanking new menu that we've got over here, and uh, it is the new opening menu where you can basically set everything that you want for your uh, Giga Structures. Do you want to only have a one star lifter? Yeah, that's possible. Do you want to have three? Possible or infinite, and that's all possible with all of these here. There's a couple, however, like the uh, Nickel Dyson Beam, where you can only have one, and the same applies to the Quasi Stellar Obliterator. I believe the same applies as well to the Birch world, but once you've uh, gone through all of your settings, etc., and make sure that you've got everything set up, and as you can see here, there's a Patreon preset called A Spec. Oh, yes, there's a brief preset just for me, and uh, we can just dive right in. First of all, there's the very first one, which is the Relic Penrose Sphere. And effectively, what happens here is that we start off on a Penrose ring uh, orbiting this nice old mega structure. We can rebuild it for only five. 5,000 alloys, but we need a specific type of technology, which is called Controlled Ergosphere Harvesting. Still, though, overall, it is a pretty decent start here, where we get a bunch of segments that are pretty standard for any sort of ring world environment. And on top of that, there is another ring world over here that we could potentially colonize relatively quickly. So, for instance, if you want to go ahead and say, hey, I want to colonize this world over here, well, we're going to need to have ourselves some more alloys. But consider Considering our food income and energy and mineral income is quite substantial, being able to build up a brand new Penrose Sphere or bring it up to spec to what it originally was like, well, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Of course, it is orbiting a black hole with all sorts of amazing things inside and uh, 25 energy uh, being added straight off the bat uh, off of the get-go is pretty nice. But yeah, it starts out with agricultural districts, research districts, and commercial districts. It's like starting on the ring world except that you have a kind of sort of Dyson Sphere in the middle, which is rather nice. Quick note here, however, is that when you start here, there are no guaranteed worlds nearby except for your ring world segment. So yeah, keep that in mind. Then we get to one that I feel is one of the more interesting ones, which is the Interstellar Ring World Complex Start, or Interstellar Habitat Start, as some would may call it. It is slightly more powerful than the Penrose Start, because of the inherent amount of resources that you're going to get at the start of the game. And, uh, well, plus 50 energy and plus 20 minerals is, in fact, quite substantial. However, as you can see here, we're starting on a Ring World with four segments that are ready to be colonized by our people, but there is a small problem here. As we go over, we will see that uh, these are effectively all ecumenopoly. And that causes some potential problems because, well, food may be an issue. This means that you're going to be spending quite a lot of time specializing your segments to add more hydroponic complexes because as you can see there are no special food districts that you you can use here which can be somewhat annoying in addition to that uh, if we go to one of our segments for instance uh, the foundry complexes of course require an upkeep of alloys uh, then we have or at least moats then gas and crystals and city segments are all separate this means that uh, we're gonna call have some serious problems at the start of the game trying to get things rolling getting those special strategic resources is a serious problem and you're going to need to overcome that by finding new planets to actually generate those resources and getting the technology required in order to get to that. If we quickly pop over towards our species tab, you will see that we are in fact a, have a interstellar habitat preference, which means that we have zero preference to any of the other planets, which can cause some serious problems. So what are you going to be doing here? Well, you're going to be floating mostly in your economy, trying to get as much food as you can, trying to get as many base resources as you can because aside from these 50 energy and 50 uh, 20 minerals you're not going to have anything which is pretty darn complicated it, it reminds me quite a lot of the standard ring world start except that you can't have any farms and all the upkeep is pretty darn complex if we take a quick look here at our planetary features we'll, we'll see that we do have a arcane generator which means that once we unlock the several uh, the separate items here 
uh, for the uh, the planetary features, all the decrepit tunnels and stuff like that. And the game does give us additional materials to build all of those segments and then we can upkeep that. But again, we're still running into the problem that we don't have any food. Uh, a challenge? Absolutely. A potential to steamroll the entire galaxy? Oh boy, it doesn't have potential to steamroll the entire galaxy. But we're not done just yet. There's more Origins in this mod. Then we get to one of the more easier starts in my personal opinion. It is the gigantic ring world start. It's very similar to the standard ring world start as uh, well we have our standard segments here. We got our agricultural, the scientific, the commercial and the city segments and we also get a behemoth housing modifier where we get a bunch of additional housing because it's going to take a little while before we've scraped together 2000 minerals to get more housing which can be a bit of a challenge however the same things apply here as before uh, the joys of the arcane generator have returned and of course the decrepit tunnels as well and there's an excavatable mountain which gives us minor jobs which is another way of getting around the issue of not having any minerals on a ring world in addition there's a bunch of additional uh, little debris fields all over the place that balances things out quite nicely you're not going to run into any issues with food due to the joys of that uh, initial agriculture segment so you'll have enough food 104 even which is a rather significant amount uh, sadly however the other segments do not have any agricultural districts attached to them so you can colonize them but you're going to need to have the amount uh, a serious amount of minerals to actually do anything with them that means that you're going to need to expand quite significantly and make sure that you have older minerals that you can get or just buy them on the market by flipping your food these are of course things that you're going to need to deal with because starting in these conditions may seem like a huge boon but due to the lack of basic resources and a lack also of strategic resources and having not really the ability to generate them is going to cause some problems in the long run. A good challenge to say the least, but still good fun. Let's move on to the last two. The crazy ones. The really crazy ones. Remember the last time we talked about Gigastructural Engineering and we talked about the Slice of Life? Well, you can now start upon one of these here Slices of Life. Yeah, that's right. The Elderson Disc is one of the origins that you can have and you will start off on one of these wonderful slices. And that right there is a rather curious uh, predicament because, well, let's put it this way. As you start off on one of these slices, I and mean, let's have a quick look here at our empire capital, we have a matter generation right off the start. We have farming generation right off the start, as well as some uh, commercial hyper segments and the nat habitation hyper segments, which means that we have all the jobs in the world available. If we quickly go to our population as well, we've got all of these jobs immediately filled, and that means that we have a relatively stable economy right off the get go, which is rather nice, but there is more. There are two other slices, and these two other slices have been um, have made habitable, except you know, there is some. Of the primitives on there which can be a bit of a problem uh, these guys are currently in the machine age which could be a potential long-term issue as well as these guys in the machine age you can obviously conquer them and make sure that they become part of your empire and get ready to rebuild the uh, ruined hyper segment but as you've already seen is that uh, a lot of these secondary segments do not have any of the agricultural megaplexes which is of course an issue in addition we have the joys of these ruined hyper segments and uh, you need to have the tetra-dimensional engineering technology available, which is a very, very late game tech, in order to set them up properly. So you can set this in as a, um, well, a, um, a Kimonopolis or something along those lines. So yeah, that's all possible. I think you don't even have a research segment as well, which is pretty cool and incredibly powerful but yeah don't try the walk from your starter segments to any of the other segments because uh, it's gonna take you a couple of generations to um cross this here boundary it's uh, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a stroll so please be aware of that still this is not the most insane starter in the game there is actually one that is a little bit more spicy i would like to say yes yes definitely Let's dive into the last one, the last origin for this video.
And we saved the best for last, of course. It is the Birch World start. The Birch World is one of the most insane buildings you can build in this particular mod. And now uh, you kind of have a choice. Either you build this or the Quasi Stellar Obliterator. Now, this is by far the most interesting start. If we quickly uh, pop into our Birch World. Birch Worlds are work on a very interesting way where districts kind of sort of get built when there is space. Because there is just infinite amount of space inside of these particular spheres, which means that we can have an infinite amount of districts. That means that we can have infinite amount of farmer jobs, of artisan jobs, basically every single uh, job available in the game is available in our districts. And that makes the Birch World extremely powerful. The real problem at the start of the game, however, is that you do not have enough food for your population, which means that you're going to need to prioritize your food production early on just to make sure that everything is balanced out nicely. Now they do generate plus 28 and you don't really need all that much food so what you could do here is just flip one of your hydroponics farms over to something a little bit more useful down the line maybe some alloys or something like that so you can get more districts but that is not all about this particular start. Um, if we actually go to our galaxy map we will see that we are effectively what could be described as a pseudo distant stars L cluster within the galactic core and we can just survey this entire area and find all sorts of planets that we can colonize maybe some primitives that we can conquer and then use them to colonize if you're really lucky they are lithoids which is incredibly useful and as soon as you're done you just go into your situation log and locate the galactic core and the connecting hyperlanes and you can rush out into the galaxy at large. Maybe as a locked up beast that has just been hiding inside of the birch world itself. It is by far the one of the more interesting starts within the game and I do highly recommend for you to go and check it out. And those are all the new origins that are available in Gigastructural Engineering. I highly recommend for you to try them out. If you haven't tried out uh, Gigastructural Engineering, there's a link down in the description below where you can go and download it and check it out yourself. In addition, they've recently started a Patreon. So if you're one of those people that have been playing this for a long time and want to support the creators, I've put a link in the comments uh, into the description down below as well. But yeah, if you are one of those players that want to try this out and you're not really in the mood to build all these extreme end game structures yourselves, use some of the origins and have some fun with it. It is a good practice round for some of the games where you start off as a standard empire and who doesn't want to completely steamroll the galaxy. I would highly recommend this to um, go and download the mod uh, Ancient Caches of Technology. It does synergize quite well and if you can find Lex out there too, well, it means that you will have a nice challenge for, for yourself. I do also recommend play when playing with these origins that you have the difficulty set too high and make sure that the crisis has a nice and high modifier on it because otherwise it's going to be slightly too easy. I want to thank my patrons for making this video possible and of course you, dear viewer. Uh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do this and we're having a lot of fun and I believe the next video should be a death diary once again. So we'll see what's going on there. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and wrap this up. Make sure you go and grab the mod again. The link is in the description below. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always... Support your creators. Download Gigastructures.